Hey everyone and welcome to Taipei, Taiwan. We got something pretty special planned today and I'm super excited about it. If you've been with us for a while or you know anything about us, you know we love cats. And on all of our travels, we make a point to visit cat cafes. And in Taipei, there is the world's first cat cafe. So we're really excited to go check it out and see what it's all about. Yeah, and on our way there, we're gonna get some snacks. Yes. So. Yeah, we're going to explore around the neighborhood too. But. Supposed to be a, a good restaurant on the way over there. So, perfect. Let's go. Let's go. So, before we go to the Cat Cafe, there is this local steam bun shop that we've been wanting to try that's just up the street from us and only about 10 minutes away from the Cat Cafe. It's right here. The entire menu is some Chinese. So, you know it's good, but we gotta use Google Translate. One, and one, and one. Fishing. So we got a truffle bun, a spicy pepper bun, and a cocoa bun, and it was all 100 Taiwanese dollars, so pretty good for three buns. Check that out. Handmade by grandmas. Handmade, I know. So steam buns are made out of some sort of dough. I don't know the entire process. And they're stuffed with some sort of filling. And then they steam them to cook them. Gives the dough a really light, kind of cloud-like texture. Mmm. I think this is the spicy pork one. This place doesn't actually have any meat on the menu. Oh, I thought it was meat. Yeah, so is it plant-based? It's plant-based. Mm, it's really good. It tricked me. Yeah. Is it vegan or vegetarian? Uh, I don't know quite, but mm. I think they uh, they do vegetarian for sure here. Okay. That was a truffle bun, right? Truffle bun. Yeah. French truffle bun. It's supposed to be filled with mushrooms. It doesn't smell very truffly. Whoa. That was like a whirlwind of flavors. Okay. So it sort of tastes like chocolate at huh. first, and then it's got the creaminess of oyster mushroom, which is what's in there. And then it is like insanely spicy, and I like spicy food, but this is like, like a nine out of 10 for spiciness. Like it is really, really spicy. I wouldn't have expected that. No, but it's delicious. Mm. This is the one that I'm most excited about, being a sweet tooth. But it was a choco lava bun, so I'm expecting some liquid in the middle of some sort. Oh yeah. Oh, it's very liquidy. Oh, it's so good. It is delightful. It's like the filling of a lava cake. Inside a light, airy bun. You know, lava cakes can be like too rich sometimes. A little hard to eat. Mm. I think this combo is just perfect. <laughs> That's the winner, for sure. I really like this. It's it's tasty. Now yeah, it, it's like a steam bun cake type thing. It's all chewy and soft, filled with just like the richest chocolate ganache. It's mm -hmm. almost like a, as rich as a truffle or something. Oh my god, your teeth! <laughs> so cute. The steam buns were pretty tasty and got us ready for the walk we're about to make. We have to cross uh, the, what's the river called? Tamsui. Tamsui. Yes, Tamsui. We have to cross the Tamsui River, so that should be really beautiful on the way over. Yeah, and we should go through like big children's park too. Neat. Yeah. We've been staying in the Shilin District, which most people know for the famous night market, but if you have kids and you happen to come here, they've got a lot of cool stuff. They've got like a children's amusement park and a science center and like an astronomy museum and like mm -hmm. a huge park too. It's and it's really all just nice. a few minutes walk from the, the night market. Yeah, totally. It's like five minutes away and nobody ever talks about it. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. Most people don't travel with children. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So that was definitely a lot longer of a walk than Google said it was. We should have taken the red line because that's the train station. 
and the cafe is in here. But yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a bad walk. It was still nice. Yeah. Oh, I think I see the sign. Is that it? And a little sleepy kitty? Cafe and Cats 1998. That must be it. Guessing this is it. Is it open? Yeah. Seems like it. Some quick history before we go inside. It was open in 1998. It has changed its name a few times over the years, but still the same cafe. And I guess it picked up and got really popular here. And then eventually Japan also picked it up where cat cafes just kind of took off. And you've probably heard of a cat cafe at this point in your life. <laughs> Anyways, uh, for this particular one, I think it's only a minimum of 200 Taiwanese dollars that you have to spend while you're in the cafe. And that's it. Let's go in. I think we might need to mask up. Yeah, it's cash only too. Oh yeah, that's a good point. And no 11 year olds. You have to be 11 and older? 12 or older. 12 or older, okay. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh -huh. I tried to go in for the pets and was denied. Smell your stinky feet. Anyways, look at this menu. Most cat cafes aren't this thing. Oh, that's so cute. I never thought I'd get to go to the first cat cafe in Taiwan. And ever. Do you want hot or ice on? Hot. Okay. Shishi. Choco cat, and we each got our own cat. I, I got what looks like a more masculine normal cat, and you got a stylized girl cat. <laughs> okay, so this cafe is super cute. They have tons of drink options and full meals or snacks ranging from 200 to what's it, about 300 each for the meals. It depends on what you want. Um, lots of options. The cats are really cute, the dogs are friendly. And some of them have these little tags to warn you not to pet them, so the ones that don't like it as much don't get harassed by the people visiting. Anyways, I ordered a brown sugar latte, and Alan got a lavender latte. Accidentally messed it up, you wanted lavender tea. Sorry. I don't think these have coffee, but we'll find out. It's like a sweet, milky, molasses-y drink. Mm. I like that a lot. I've noticed in Taiwan they really like the really strong molasses brown sugar flavor. Oh yeah, if you can hear it. There's a mina bird here too. If you don't know what a mina bird is, they're like these kind of chatty birds that we lived with in Hawaii and they're around Asia. But they have one in here somewhere. There's definitely not coffee in that though. It's interesting. <laughs> Do you like it? It's creamy and delicious, so I'll give it that. But the lavender flavor tastes synthetic. Mm. Sort of like I'm drinking uh, Fabuloso floor cleaner, but then I'm not here for the coffee, I'm here for the cats. <laughs> I don't think it tastes artificial. Really? Mm -hmm. It's like if you steeped lavender in milk. I like it. Add a little uh, sweetener. I actually really like this. And they put real bits of lavender on top, which makes me think they're probably using real lavender. Maybe your taste buds are different. You want to try mine? Sure. Wow, yours is really delicious. It's very molasses y. It's yeah. like drinking a ginger snap cookie without the ginger. I think I like yours a little better, to be honest. Wow. I know. We might have to trade. Trade these. <laughs> I like this cup too. <laughs> Give me five. Give me five. Cat paw. That cat's like, oh no. <laughs> no cat for you, Brandy. No cat for you. So cute. I love all the decorations here. Like everything's a cat. Cat, 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 cat. 
That's a little fly on the walls, cat. Cat everything. Oh, and there's a cat in the cat. Of course, now that we left. Yeah, okay, now that we left, we did a cat. Okay, so we've been to a lot of cat cafes, and I just want to say I love the vibe of this one. It's very relaxed. Some of them are very uh, almost transactional, like you have to pay, you get a time slot, you only get so long, a lot of the cats get tired because there's lots of kids running around and stuff, and this is just so chill. You just come, you have your coffee, you spend time with the cats, just no questions asked, it's just relaxed. <laughs> That was really cute. I liked that a lot. It's neat to see the very first one, like, ever. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like... so simple and low stress. Oh, absolutely. I love that you just went in. It wasn't crowded. It was just come in, enjoy the cats, enjoy your coffee, tea, whatever. And it, they had good drinks, too. So, yeah, would recommend it if you love cats or you love cat cafes and you're in Taipei. Anyways. Uh, I think we're going to go head down by the river now for a proper walk. We only crossed over it and we didn't get to really see the like beautiful part of it. So we're going to go head down and do that. Yeah, let's go. Just made it to the Tan City Riverside. There's a huge walking path. I think you said there's like a like a 70 kilometer bike path or something? 70 miles. 70 miles, wow, so even longer. <laughs> yeah, there's a bike path that goes for like ever along this, which we're not gonna be able to do this trip. I don't even know how long we're gonna make it outside right now. It's pretty chilly. Yeah. Taiwan's weather is all over the place. Some days you're like dying 90 degrees Fahrenheit out. And then the next day it's literally like 55 and you're freezing. <laughs> what? I think it's funny, 90. Fahrenheit, because everybody knows it's not almost boiling outside. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Someone European's gonna be walking and be confused for a second. <gasps> Taipei? Taipei's as hot as the surface of Mercury? <laughs> How dare you? Someone's gonna do that. <laughs> Mark my words. But anyways, <laughs> look how nice this is. I love how well Taiwan integrates the nature and the urban scape. I love it. It's yeah. really cool. They got a lot of nice parks and mountains and stuff nearby. Totally, totally. You're never too far from a quiet spot to unwind. Definitely. That park is so nice. I love that whole river sidewalk. People are out enjoying it. They have workout equipment for people. So many pretty flowers and just awesome, awesome vibe. But it's starting to rain and it's getting a little chilly out. Yep, so we're gonna head back to our neighborhood and eat something delicious. You know I love food. Always ready for food. But I think we gotta catch the bus from here. Yeah. yeah. It's already packed, it must yeah. be good. Yep. Okay, so we don't have much battery left on the camera. We're gonna see how far we can get through on this. But um, Thailand, the neighborhood that we're staying in, is known for its cheap food. And we've had tons of Thailand issues lately. And it's just a really good thing to use food too because Taiwan part of Japan for 50 years. So we got some Japanese ramen and we're gonna see how it compares. I got the spicy meat, so it looks pretty good. Mmm. A nice, thick miso ramen. Mmm. Forky. A little fishy, so I hope you like it. It's not bad, though. How does it compare to Japan? It's pretty good. Honestly. It's not 
on quite on par with like the fancier Japanese restaurants, but for like just somewhere you pop and get ramen, it tastes extremely similar. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. It's almost like Okinawa is like 200 kilometers away. Tsukimen is one of my favorites. If you don't know, it's a cold dipping noodle that you put into a concentrated sauce. You can have my nori. <laughs> Gladly. It's like herby, Sichuan-y. I don't even know what gives it the umami. It doesn't taste like soy, but it's not ramen. It's totally different. I can't say I've ever had anything like that in Japan. Well, that's it for today. If you liked our video, we're doing another one. So watch it. Helps us out. See you then. Bye. Bye.